Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, you know, this year is going by really quick for me and I think for most people, but also because it's the 50th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War and the 50th anniversary of the POWs coming home, there's been a lot of special events that I've been involved in. So uh, this year is flying by and uh, the summer is really flying by. I've been traveling, speaking, having fun, going to reunions. You know, there's an old joke about uh, time flies when you're having fun. Well, interestingly, in the POW camps, as a part of humor, we would say, fun flies when you're doing time. <laughs> and uh, we'd laugh about that, and it was our way of dealing with the situation. Today I want to talk about communications, and so I will talk a little bit about some POW stories and how important it was there. But also remember, this is all about leadership, and leaders must communicate, and they must listen also, by the way. So listening is part of communications. Now, in the POW camps, our enemy's first goal was to keep us locked up safely so we didn't escape. But second, it was to prevent us from communicating because they knew if we could communicate, we would be planning uh, resistance to their goal of getting us broken, where we would comply with all of their rules and give them what they wanted, which was uh, information, military information, and uh, propaganda. They wanted us to make propaganda, anti-war propaganda for them, make anti-war statements. And they would torture people to do that. Well, we were resisting that, and so there was a battle. Even though we'd been shot down and captured, the battle went on, us against our enemy, our captors. And so communications was what kept us tied together. They tried to isolate us. The walls in the cells typically had 14 inches of concrete and brick uh, where you couldn't easily talk through that. There were always guards in the hall to catch you communicating and prevent you from communicating. Only one group or cell would get out at one time, uh, at any one time, and you couldn't see other POWs. So it was all to isolate us. But we were committed to communicate. And so we had all sorts of communication. One of the POWs was a friend of mine, almost eight years there. I lived with him for uh, two and a half years. But he's the one that brought in the tap code. And his story actually is in our new book, Captured by Love, POW Romance Stories. And uh, Smitty Harris brought in the tap code. And we could tap on those walls and communicate through. And it just uh, was a full-time job, really, doing all that communicating. But we also had a hand code. We learned how to do that, where we could communicate visually with people 20 yards away. We sometimes wrote little notes and slid them under the door. But the goal of all of that, the first goal, was to let somebody know, hey, we're connected to you, we care about you, and we're not leaving without you. So they would know they were not alone. But secondly, it was to communicate how we're going to resist the enemy. It was our mission, our goals of resisting the enemy and returning with honor. So communication was a huge, huge deal in the POW camp. But having been a leadership consultant now for 26 years, I can tell you that communication is essential in the workplace. Everywhere I go, we talk about that and how it's so important to clarify. Clarify what you're expecting, clarify the culture, clarify the mission, the goals, and specifics that people have to do. So communications is, is just so important. And one of the things that happens, leaders get so busy, focused on results, because people are putting pressure on them for results, is that you don't take time to think about your communications. So I want to recommend that you take time, pause, and reflect on how well you're communicating on the logic, rational side of what we need to do, A, B, and C, and how we're going to do it, that sort of thing but also take time to reflect on how I'm communicating in a more relational way to let people know that they're valued, that I care about them, they're important, they're doing a good job, and also to listen to them about whatever they are, want to talk about at the time. 
Sometimes you just have to move from the logic down to the emotional. If they're talking about something that's fun, and maybe just listen to that and laugh with them. Or sometimes they're going to be sad. You know, and you have to connect. You can't be logical. You've got to come down and connect at an emotional level with empathy. And that's so powerful when you can learn to adapt and do that as a leader. I have great stories about four-star generals that have learned to adapt, one to be more empathetic and one to be more logical and direct. But they turned, to be, turned out to be great leaders. So learning to adapt and learning to listen at both the rational, logical level and the emotional level is critical. In this book, again, also, we have a, a story uh, of a couple who met she was a widow. Her husband was a POW. Uh, she thought he was, but he didn't come home. And so he was had killed in action, and she was so sad. And then one day, some friends of hers at the local officers club were hosting a guy who'd been a POW for seven and a half years. And he came home, and his wife was divorced. And they got together, and because of their empathy for each other, they became companions, and then got married, and were married for more than 40 years until he passed away in his 80s. So being able to communicate and connect at that level is so important. Communications is essential. I have a chapter in this book, the Leading with Honor book, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, where I, it's, the chapter is named Over Communicate. <laughs> and you have to do that as leaders. And then in this book, there are two chapters on collaborating and clarifying and how important it is to clarify and collaborate. So think about communications. Take time to reflect, to meditate, to uh, just really think about how well you're communicating in those two areas of mission and people. Work on that. I promise you there'll be a great payoff and you'll be more successful at home and at work. Take care and God bless.